So I've had another week of using my iPhone 16 Pro Max, which means I've got even more thoughts and more things I want to chat over with you and discuss in this video. We're going to look at two main points, the two new features of the 16s this year. We're going to look at that camera control button, the controversy surrounding it, and we're going to talk about what it's like to really use out in the real world at live events. And also Apple intelligence. Are we looking at it the wrong way? Is it just the icing on the cake? Is the best of iPhone 16 yet to come? If this is the first of my videos you've seen, my name's David and I make videos about Apple Gear every week. Why? Simply because I use Apple Gear every day and I love chatting about Apple Gear and making videos about Apple Gear. Now, first of all, back to the iPhone itself. One of the biggest criticisms on the iPhone 16 this year and on Apple, and in recent videos, I have been trying to almost protect Apple because it, I said before, we seem to come down so hard on them. And much of that criticism that I read in the comments is they're lacking innovation, they're lacking in design. Well, what I'm going to do here is just wheel it back a little bit. In the UK, certainly, and I think from what I understand, it's very similar in the US, that most of the times that people get a new iPhone, it's on a carrier upgrade. And certainly in the UK, those carrier upgrades tend to be on a 24-month cycle, so two years. So I'm going to take it back to the iPhone 14 compared to the iPhone 16. Most people don't go and buy a new phone every year. It's just not the way things work out. And if you are one of those people, it means you're a diehard tech fan, iPhone fan, Apple fan, and fine. If that's your bag, if that's what you want to do, if you've worked hard for it and that's your treat, I totally get that. And then if there's not a lot of changes year to year, well, you, you kind of would expect that because you know you're changing annually. But for most people, it is a two-year cycle. And if we just begin to think about some of the improvements between the 14 and the 16, they are vast. I mean, it starts off with the titanium, obviously. The titanium edges were a genius idea, not only because they saved a lot of weight, as I mentioned in last week's video, it's a considerable weight saving to them, but equally because they last better, it's great for longevity, they don't mark, they don't scratch, they don't show fingerprints as badly. And that's just one of the, the first and obvious things. The curved edges makes a huge difference. Now it's tiny, it's almost imperceivable. It possibly won't show so much on the B-roll here in this video, but when you've got those phones in your hand, it's so much sharper on that 14. It really is. It's a small change. And, and I hadn't realized until going back and looking at it last week and again this week, just how much more comfortable these new phones are. If you're into your bezels and bezel gate, the bezel, of course, are much, much smaller now. And then we start getting into some of the tech improvements or the, the, the technical improvements as well. You've got a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera now. You've got three extra focal lengths on the camera. Of course, on that main camera, that is it 24. You've also got 28 and 35, and you've got the 0.5 on the Pro as well now. You've got the 4K, 120 slow motion. There's the action button, which the 14 didn't have. I'd have gotten that was still the mute switch on there. And now that action button actually makes a lot more sense suddenly, because with iOS 18, where you can change those icons on the lock screen, where they don't now have to be the torch, and they don't have to be the camera, you can swap them out to whatever you want. Now you can have that action button to launch a camera if you want. So suddenly that action button makes an awful lot more sense. Of course, USB-C, only came to, your, to the iPhone 15 as well. So that two year gap means you're going from Lightning, which was useless. And don't forget, that was a phone that gave us ProRes, which you couldn't use because the files are just too big to get them off of the iPhone. Now jumping from a 14 to a 16 on your two year cycle upgrade, you're gonna get USB-C, you're gonna get Thunderbolt speeds. It's gonna be eye opening for you. You get faster wireless charging and you get better battery life. There's a massive jump in improvements all the way through. And that's when it really begins to resonate just how much Apple has come on in those two years. So year on year, possibly the changes are smaller, but if you look at somebody that's changing every two years, suddenly that is a lot of improvements. I'm coming around to the 16 now and I'm going to begin talking about the big feature this year, or one of the big features this year, the camera control button. I've had more of a chance to get out and start using it over the weekend. It's making things slower at the moment. Now, it might improve over time. It's quite possible I'll get better at using it over time. The placement is wrong. There's no getting away from it where the position of the camera control button is just isn't comfortable and it's clumsy. The actual haptic part of the button is fine to unlock the camera and to shoot a picture or to shoot a video but equally no quicker than the other methods. But the other thing is that the haptic part of it, where you're trying to slide through the various settings, is really, really finicky. It's really awkward. It's just clumsy. The amount of times you scroll past what you're looking for as well, you don't, I don't at least, seem to land on if I want to, say, go for the depth of field, it seems to overshoot it. They have just added yet another camera to it as well in the latest iOS update. You've now got the selfie camera on there as well, but it's no quicker than using the normal way on the screen. And this is the whole part about it. It's, it's no, no quicker, it's not very intuitive. And because of the, where you're holding the phone 
and sliding. The amount of times I've taken pictures of the inside of my palm where you're trying to hold it and slide through the menus, at the moment, it just doesn't feel very good. I was at uh, was a Windsor Half Marathon, not far from where I live here in the UK at the weekend, and I decided to go there to check out the camera. There's going to be various pictures on the screen now. I've shown you various focal lengths. And the cameras we know are brilliant. I don't need to sell you on the cameras. They were class leading. They are class leading. But it's a live sport, sporting event. And I never felt comfortable reaching for the camera control button. In fact, it didn't really cross my mind to know, OK, partly that's muscle memory. But on the times I went to do it, if I saw a runner coming, I particularly wanted to take a picture of whatever reason, I couldn't rely on being ready with that camera control button. Now, I'm not going to come down too hard on it for a couple of reasons. Basically, it's great to see Apple are innovating. Now, if I put my cynical hat on, I could say, well, were they innovating or were they just selling us something? OK, there is that angle to it. But at least they were trying to think of how to make the phone better. They haven't got it right. They didn't get it right with Apple Watch initially. They haven't got it right with Vision Pro. But it's certainly with Apple Watch in the long run, they knew and listened to feedback. They listened to criticism and got it right. And hopefully, they're going to get it right with this. Because let's face it, one of the main features of any high-end smartphone, flagship smartphone, is the camera setup. Apple has got it absolutely nailed when it comes to quality of the cameras, particularly with video. So if this button eventually makes that, that whole feeling, that motion, that tactility better, that can only be a good thing. I don't know if you've been using it. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Again, out in the real world, that's what we talk about here. And I, I've been using it. I say that sporting event, I've done the golf and the marathon now, and it just feels clumsy. It just feels slow. Now I want to begin thinking about the other feature. Don't forget, this was built ground up for Apple intelligence. We're skeptical about that, but we'll take that as a given for now. Now, the way Apple has gone about launching Apple intelligence, it's very clumsy. There's something that doesn't add up. I firmly believe in the longer run, Apple will be proven to have got it right. But initially, as of right now, when you look at all their marketing material, all their launch material, everything was set up around Siri. And unless you're on the dev version of the betas, you're not seeing any of it at the moment. I'm running the public beta of 18.2, and there's barely anything on there. Certainly, the Siri that we were promised isn't there. Now, it's interesting. Even if they'd given us that glowing rainbow around the edge, your mind probably would have been tricked into thinking it was a better version of Siri, kind of the emperor's new clothes. You would have just thought it's better because it looks new, because it looks different. And I've seen it on a phone, and it looks fantastic. When I was up at the Apple store, I saw it. It looks beautiful. But we're going to have to wait probably until sometime next year to get it. But here's my other point, and this is a really important point. So I really want to chat through with you. Do you know I love the, the comments that we get? We have a week-long chat on these videos, and I, I really enjoy that. So here's something I want to run past you. Say you're that person that's getting your phone on a two-year upgrade deal. Most of those people are not tech nerds. They don't sit and watch videos about tech. They don't read blogs about tech. They don't enjoy fiddling with every feature on there. Most people get their phone on an upgrade and carry on using it exactly the way they did before. It was interesting. I'm not the biggest train on public transport user, but I've been on the train a couple of times this year going into London for a couple of events. And uh, I was looking around in the train carriage and the, the number of people that were still using iPhone, well, I saw a couple of iPhone 8s, but certainly 11s and 12s, and they looked really beaten up. They had patina to them if they wanted to be polite, but they certainly had seen some time. They'd done their time out in the field. People don't get caught up on all of these latest functions. Most people won't know half of what they're getting on their new phones. I guarantee you a lot of people won't know anything about Apple intelligence. The first they might come across it is when they press Siri and it's got the glowing edge and they'll think, what's going on there? But the majority of people are not going to be hung up about Apple intelligence. It's not going to be as big of a deal to them in their everyday lives as it is to us. Now, there are some meaningful improvements coming along. Yes, where it can summarize. I think summarizing long emails, summarizing texts, summarizing web pages could be really handy. The writing tools could be really handy as long as they feel right and they don't sound too machine-like. They could be useful. And that's why I'm thinking that Apple will get it right. They will give us the tools that we actually want to use daily and our quality of life improvements. So... The big selling points for iPhone 16 this year, Apple intelligence, half-baked, camera control, half-baked. That's not to say they won't get it right in the end. And I do think they are one of the companies that when you buy on a promise, they will deliver. They will hear the feedback. They won't make a song and dance about it, but they will hear the feedback and eventually begin to give us what we're wanting. Now, there's also this argument about Steve Dob Jobs must be turning in his grave at the moment. Just a point I want to make here. 
we've all got massive respect for, for Steve Jobs and what he did for the company, turning it around from near bankruptcy, just days away from bankruptcy, around to the company that it is now. But Steve Jobs, if he was still around now, would be approaching 70 years old. He wouldn't be the visionary that he was back then. I don't care how well you age at 70, there's some very fine people out there still working with brilliant brains. I'm not saying his brain wouldn't be brilliant, but you have your peak. We all have our moment. We all have that spell when we're at our zenith. And quite possibly for Steve, that was with the iPod and the iPhone and the iPad. He's got three massive legacies behind him. I think that proves the worth of the man, but that man wouldn't be the man we would be thinking of in 2024. It'd be a, a 70 year old running a company. And do you really want a 70 year old? who's trading on a fantastic past to be your vision for the future. As it is now, the head team at Apple are getting a little bit too old. And I think that could be an issue. That's for another video. But it's just this thing where Steve would be turning in his grave. I don't know if he would. He might actually be quite happy that they're beginning to push boundaries and beginning to go in new directions and trying things. And to get somewhere, inevitably, you're going to make some mistakes. And let's face it, when Apple makes a mistake because of the millions of users it's got, it causes a huge, great ripple. They can't make a mistake and keep it quiet. When they get something wrong, everybody knows about it. That's just the nature of the beast. Every company has its moment. Every company has its great spells and its flat spells. It could be Apple's going through a little bit of a trough at the moment. I'm not saying it is. I think when you look at those improvements from 14 to 16, it shows they are still iterating. And let's not forget the Vision Pro. Yes, it's exorbitantly expensive, but it is a great showcase of what Apple are capable of doing. And who knows where that might yet end up. So I'm not saying Apple is in a flat spot, but maybe it's just a slower spell at the moment. And I said earlier in this video that I've tried very hard to defend Apple recently. I just, being very much an Apple channel, because if you could see in the studio now, I'm surrounded by Macs. I've got a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, an M3 MacBook Air, M4 iPad Pro. I've got AirPods. I've got so much kit around. I've got three iPhone Pros in the studio. I love Apple gear. And that's why I make videos each and every week, because I love making videos about the gear that I'm using and talking to you and chatting to you about how I'm finding using them. But there is an issue that I need to bring up. When I bought my iPhone, almost two weeks ago now, I also bought the AirPods 4 with noise cancelling. Uh, and I'll be talking about those probably next week in a video. And I also bought AirPods Max. Now, obviously, I kind of knew what I was getting into. I knew there wasn't much new about them. It was the new port, the USB-C port, fantastic. And it was the new colours. So I went for the new colors. I went for orange. Now, I did put a short up about this earlier this week. I don't know if you saw it or not. This is what I was faced with when I got them out of the box. Yeah. Now, if I just take them out for you here as well, the colors there are odd. Uh, I mean, if I just pop them on for you. I can't hear anything, but they, engineering-wise, beautiful. I love what they've done with the AirPods sound quality, the sound signature, fantastic. But look at that color. For a company that was very much design-led, how could they have sat down in their team and said, that's a good color? And not only that, to pair it with that case, nothing had prepared me for that. On the website, their color reproduction isn't bad of the actual AirPods. But that case, that case is unforgiving. And I think I'm going to take it back. I've never done that before, but I think I'm going to take it back within my 14-day period and swap it out probably for the midnight. I just don't think I can live with those for however many years I'll be living with them until we get a meaningful improvement. And just to go back to what I was saying, trying to defend Apple, this is where they let themselves down. The color is only part of it. They didn't give us an H2 chip. There's no adaptive audio. They've got the same battery life and the same case. There's no power switch. They're not dust, sweat, or water resistant. All, by the way, all of these features you'll find on the AirPods 4 that I've got here. There's no conversation awareness. There's no voice isolation. The list goes on and on and on. The color is inexcusable. That was just the the final thing for me. I was willing to forgive everything because the sound is so good, but that color, it really is awful. So I will be swapping them out. I, 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 I'd like your thoughts on that colorway of that particular package. You can imagine when I opened up the box and saw that staring at me, quite what I thought about it. So I know I've given you a lot to think about in this video, but that's what we're doing here. You know how much I love chatting with you and interacting with you during the week and coming back to you. I'd love your thoughts on all we've talked about here. Are we looking at Apple Vision, Apple intelligence rather, in the wrong way? Do you think people that aren't as hooked on the tech as us are going to notice it as much? And is the improvement, are the improvements in the iPhone 16 as minor as we think? If we look at that two year gap, I think they're pretty impressive actually. A lot has changed. But do let me know, as you're brilliant at getting involved, so do get involved in the comments. You know, I try and answer 
each and every one of you, and I can only thank you for your interaction. And if you've made it this far into the video, I'm guessing that you're probably enjoying the kind of videos that I'm doing here. I'm going to leave you the video that I put out last week where we talked about some of the other issues with the iPhone as well, my first week of using it. I think that might be interesting for you to have a look at. But if you enjoyed this, I will be back in a week's time. I put a video out each and every week here on the channel talking about Apple gear just because I love talking Apple with you. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you next week.